Warning, the radio broadcast you are about to hear was made by men and for men. It may at times seem a little rough around the edges, brash, and certainly not canonically approved by papal authority. But its content may indeed challenge you to become the man, father, husband God has called you to be. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to The Obligation, where we discuss topics in faith and in life to help you become the man God called you to be. Let's get started. Chase and Murphy, another week of the obligation. You are at the beach and ready to catch anything? John, how's it going? Doing good. Yes, we were down at the beach, came down, had a little kind of a work workcation, I guess. Uh, had to get a meet a delivery guy for a new washing machine. So I uh, uh, came down, had a few other things around the house, and then uh, Jake and I snuck off and did a little fishing this morning. Went about 35 miles out. and. Uh, had a good day, picked up a mahi mahi and a couple of false albacore just for fun. But uh, yeah, so back and ready to go. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I, uh, one of the things I wanted to cover today was all around about dealing with disappointment. And so many things in our lives right now kind of might feel like disappointments or we've had things go on in our life that are disappointing. And uh I've had a couple things recently that have just been uh, that have had that that feel to me and how I navigate it and how I navigate it with my faith. Uh, and it's been a challenging moment. And again, I've always thought about disappointment being the gap between your expectations and reality. And we know God's plans are different than our plans. How do you handle disappointment? Yeah, that's a big one. You know, um, the expectations are the big thing. Um, you know, so many times we'll, you know, we'll, we'll have it all figured out, you know, in our head and, and how it's all supposed to be. And, and obviously more times than not, that is not going to happen. Um, yeah, there's, there's certainly enough in this world and this life, uh, just every day that, you know, if, if we're not careful and we try to, you know, plan it all out and, and, you know, think we know how it's going to uh, play out before us definitely going to lead to some disappointment. So, uh, I, for example, and I, I know it's kind of, it's funny cause I wasn't even thinking about this till you brought up disappointments, but the other day there's a restaurant that we, we like to go to after church sometimes. And it got to the point where they just, they just couldn't get it. They had such a great product, you know, and, and, and just, they just could not manage. And, uh, it was going on for a while. And every time we'd go, I'd get frustrated because they couldn't get the food there in time or they couldn't take the order in time. They couldn't get the check in time. And I mean, you know how it is when you're going out with the kids, like especially after you've you know been in church and you know it's been a while since you've eaten and you know everybody's kind of ready to chow down. Uh, kids are a little wired, and you know, and ultimately, you know, it just you know it kept just becoming disappointed, you know. So we kind of stayed away for a while. And uh, Ava's birthday was this past weekend, and you know that's where she wanted to go. And so I just kind of I told Joanne, I said, you know what? I have zero expectations. I'm just not even going to expect anything, uh, you know, and, and that way I'm going in. If I got zero expectations, then, you know, I could be, I could be pleased. And and I actually, it, it turned out better and probably was not much different than what it had been, but it was a nice meal. And, uh, and I, I went in though, I kind of prepared, I prepared with zero expectations. <laughs> You've lowered so. your expectations <laughs> and it decreased the level of disappointment. And that's uh, not, you know, that's, you got to be careful with that, right? You know, you don't want to do that with your business or your family or anything. But sometimes, you know, you just have to be careful how you how you lay it out. It and really it's like, is. It, it's, it's an interesting dynamic. And I know this happens a lot in churches. And I'm going to go to something very specific around expectations, which is um, the message or the homily or the liturgy of the word that the priest deliver at mass. I find this to be one of the biggest areas of disappointment in the church because the expectation, the belief about what they think is going to happen is different than what they ultimately, ultimately experience. And they are negative or they talk down or that this priest doesn't do it for them and I, I hear it so often, Jason, uh, oh, yeah. from people, and it's not up to par with what the evangelical church 
does. And so this idea of disappointment specifically as it relates to our expectation comes out in the liturgy of the word. Now, I've learned over the years, thanks to my brother and other great priests, that it's not necessarily about the priest and every message isn't going to hit home and you're there not for the priest, which I think is a great way mindset to go in. So I've kind of adopted that mentality that I'm going to do the work in between mass to right. continue to grow my faith and listen to the word or listen to my favorite uh, priest's homily podcast, whatever it may be. And anything I get from the mass and the homily is a bonus. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if that's good or bad. That's just my approach of kind of lowering the expectation and going for the right reasons versus going for a priest. And I mean, that that's where it, it really boils down to is going for the right reasons, because ultimately we know that the mass, you know, is the the representation of the sacrifice of our Lord. And that is the source and summit of our faith. I mean, that's it. I mean, that's without that you know we're we're just poor little lost sheep but but thankfully we do have the mass we do have holy eucharist and and that amazing you know miracle that takes place each time we're there every single day uh in, in our lives and um and i think yeah, that's important you know for for a couple of years you know i struggled with you know the church or the way you know it was being done at you know wherever it might have been and Finally, I, I really started to understand and started to, I guess it, it, it takes study too. I mean, you have to really understand because um, that's the beauty of our faith. That you can go to any, anywhere in, in the world. And, you know, with that thought, we know that that's, that's the, that's the, that's the meat of it, right? That's, that's, that's where the rubber meets the road. And um, knowing that we are there for that sacrifice to, you know, engage in that, that union with our Lord um, none of the others, the extracurriculars, you know, really, they do matter, but in, in, in the grand scheme, they really don't, and, and they don't have to be present. And a lot of times in many, many different places, like a, a daily mass doesn't even include a homily, the Roman form. Now the, um, the Novus Ordo mass per se, you know, compared to the traditional Latin mass, traditional Latin mass typically wouldn't have a homily for a daily mass. Mm. Uh, and I, I think maybe people, you know, they, if, if you're going just for the homily, you got to be really careful with that. And, and you know, cause, and I think a lot of Catholics miss that. Um, well, um, I was traveling last weekend. I was in Philadelphia for a little work trip and a little pleasure. And I found a, uh, there were tons of Catholic churches around Philadelphia, which is great. And I found uh, a great church near where I was staying. And I go to 830 Mass and I walk in and, you know, pretty church. Priest didn't kind of blow me away at first in terms of his appearance. And I started to kind of just lower my expectations about this homily that I was about to hear. Um, and knowing what that Mass was, again, maybe good, maybe bad, doesn't matter. Um, but this priest gets up. And he pulls out his piece of paper, which typically is a turnoff for me or thinks that it might not be as good as it, it could be. Yeah. And this young priest uh, pulled out his piece of paper and he, and, he, and he opened with talking about the Eucharist because of the reading last week and specifically how the Eucharist is the linchpin of our faith. Mm. And he uses this terminology that it's the linchpin of our faith. And if it's not true, the church isn't true. Yeah. And if the church isn't true, uh, Jesus isn't true. And, yeah. and he made this really critical point about the Eucharist being the linchpin of the faith. And he talked in detail, Jason, about how many Catholics don't believe the Eucharist and how sad that is. But everyone in that church is there for a reason and they believe it and that's what's key and that's what we can hold on to and he makes this strong correlation jason um between christ the catholic church being the eucharist christ and the catholic church and how they fit together and how they work together and he related it to our families Mm. And specifically, the husband and the wife and the that being a symbol of Christ being the head of the church and the Catholic Church. And it just it became very real to me in this moment with this priest that I had 
very low expectations for really challenging conventional thinking about how critical not just any family is, but my family, Jason. Yeah. And it was this moment where I'm by myself, no family with me, they're at home. And I just, I had this moment where I'm reflecting on how critical my role is as a husband and to my children to resemble what Christ and the church has done. And it was proof to me (laughs) that in that moment that, yes, I lowered the expectation, but boy, did he deliver in a big way and he really challenged my thinking. So that is my story about expectations and not being disappointed uh, in that particular moment as it relates to the homily. Yeah, that's a, those are, those are wonderful times, aren't they? You know, especially when you, you know, you've kind of, kind of stepped away from the expectations. Um, Not that we should, you know, always lower our expectations, but if we go in, I mean, just speaking of today, you know, for example, for just a fishing example, if I, if I build it up and I've got these expectations and we're going to tear it up and, uh, you know, we don't catch anything, then of course I'm going to be, you know, disappointed and um, it's going to turn, you know, maybe a, a day that would have been, you know, just a relaxing day and, and good fellowship with my boys or by myself with, you know, just being able to enjoy God's creation. Um, how that could just, you know, steer us off the road, whereas we kind of go and allow it to be what God wants it to be. And, um, and that's just, you know, I look at so many different things in my life now. I, I try to slow things down because, our, you know, our society and our, our way of life is so fast and it's just second to second, minute to minute and the news cycle. And gosh, you know, you get caught up in that and there's just it's like you know, there is no there is no time and there is no peace. And uh, but to be able to kind of step back from that and just look at look at the miracles in your life and what God sets up for us when we just kind of set back and let him be who he is and trust uh, that he'll take care of us uh, because gosh, so many times we can just really, really make it, you know, a lot worse for ourselves in, in so many different ways. Um, it, it, what we expect from our spouses, what we expect from our kids, from ourselves, from our priests uh, and just on and on and on. And when we, when we slow down and we just, you know, take every moment for, for what it is, you know, got a gift from God, every heartbeat, every, every breath, you know, we're here for a reason up until, you know, our heart and our, our breath stops, you know, and, uh, it's, it's a wonderful way. I can't say I'm perfect at it. I try, you know, there's, I have, I have glimmering, you know, pieces here and there where I feel like I'm, I'm kind of being, letting God lead and, and just, you know, enjoying, you know, the moment and him. And it's not always easy, you know, enjoying God and, and you know, in the moment can, you know, certainly there's difficult times, but I know that's where our, our hope is, you know, that we know he'll, he'll see us through that and, and he's bringing it through it, bringing us through it for a reason. Um, so yeah, no, I, I I think those are wonderful times, and I'm I'm glad you were able to kind of step back and and you know appreciate it and see it for what it was. And well, and it's that. like it's one of you know it's those moments where when you are steeped in the work and you have I was going through uh, I'm I'm 230 some days into the blessing of the Bible, and previously the day before on the plane I was listening to it and. Um, there was an example that Father Mike was going through, and the line in, in Scripture was wisdom as the goal. Mm. Wisdom as the goal. And when you think about expectations and being steeped in the work, it was like instead of having the expectations about the outcome, about how great or what, my, how my life would change from a particular homily or as it relates to how your children are going to act or whatever it may be, if the if the expectation is more process oriented and more journey oriented than outcome oriented like wisdom is the goal wisdom right. is the expectation and i'm going to do the work necessary to grow in wisdom so i can be a better dad and a better believer and a better uh, even ev- evangelizer wisdom yeah. as the expectation versus the outcome of I'm going to bring 500 people to Christ, or I'm mm. going to have hear the best homily I've ever heard in my life today, or I'm going to win that golf tournament. Um, can the expectations be rooted in not the outcome, 
but as the journey or the process. And then it starts to get better. Can the expectation be that I'm going to enjoy the time with my family at that birthday lunch, regardless of how the food or the service is? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it just, it boils down to detachment, really, you know, detachment from, from ourselves, you know, and that's where we can, you know, be more attached to God and, and his will and in his wisdom. Um, because, you know, when we're so attached to ourselves and what we think is best for us, that's, you know, that's where, you know, we get misled, but that detachment is, is tied right along with, with sacrifice. So I think, you know, coming full circle, you know, detaching from ourselves, um, sacrificing you know those wants needs desires opinions thoughts whatever of ourselves uh in a sense that's a sacrifice and through that sacrifice we're allowed to be united with christ's sacrifice who laid down his life for us and uh, and truly live through that and it's it's such a, a wonderful thing you know the way it, it all works when we sit here and just kind of hash it out and and we see all the the connections um you know, how we we aren't really shorting ourselves. We're only, you know, benefiting from, you know, truly, you know, release releasing those those own you know our own desires and wants and 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 trying to, you know, understand what, what God desires and wants for us. Um man, it's a it's a learning lesson every single day. It really sure. is. And I just saw recently, even as it relates to this, uh Pope Francis uh really called catholics to rediscover the importance of sunday liturgy and getting into the word and being steeped in the work and um you know so often we just show up we expect all these magical things to be given to us and then we're gonna go back to our daily life and then maybe we'll come the next week and i think there's something to this recommitment to the word and recommitment to the sunday liturgy um and in really in an everyday basis to do something to grow in wisdom and in faith so you can handle these moments of disappointment, whether it be with your spouse or with kids or in yourself better and more effectively. Um, so kudos, kudos to Pope Francis if he needs any kudos. Yeah. Man, isn't this like such just anti the world? The world just cannot, I mean, the world just goes in such a different direction but that is like why it is so important for us to stand out and and be those lights and and when people's expectations are not met um you know whether in business or whatever and we're and we don't lash back and we you know join in and say well your expectations are 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 not met well mine aren't either because you're not acting the way i thought you should be acting but whenever we just we don't engage in that and we show our detachment from expressing our opinion or you know, being right or whatever it may be, you know, people look at that and it's it's a curious thing in this world because people are getting more and more, you know, self-indulgent in that in that respect where it is all about everyone else and it is about opinion and their stance and being right and heaven forbid, you know, your expect your your belief or your way or your explanation of what you know, things are compared to what I expect them to be. They just don't, they don't jibe. And so we, we are not, you know, it's not even about opinion anymore. You know, it's, it's truly just lines are drawn with people. Um, and it's a shame. It's a real shame. But how, I was just having a conversation with uh, one of my employees about, you know, expectations of, uh, of a, of a customer, you know, compared to, you know, how we've been handling them. And, you know, truthfully, we've been handling them well, as well as I believe anyone else would, but sh- her expectations, um, and a lot of good, a lot of things go into that, right? Our expectations are guided by a lot of things, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes they're by seeing things on TV and thinking, well, it should be that way, or, or talking to one other person thinking it should be that way. But then there's all this, uh, there's a lot of other things that, in, that, that control our expectations. And, it, you know, it could be, she might have just had a bad day, you know, or, you know, someone along the way, whether it wasn't even related to this particular thing with business, it, you know, in a personal way, somebody treated her and it and it triggered something. And so, you know, she's had this this expectation. It just it can't be fulfilled. And so my my advice to to you know my employee was just, you know, don't engage, just be as respectful as you can. And, you know, through that, you know, yeah, who knows? You know, some people out there you just can't please, but some I think because they see how different a Christian truly is, um, 
I think it shocks them sometimes. And I think they, it, it's, it turns that there, it, we, we, as a mirror, we reflect, we kind of reflect that back and like, wow, you know, I'm just another human being <laughs> trying to, trying to live here. And, um, and I'm not going to engage in that. I'm going to, I'm going to just, I'm just going to be, you know, the way I was. And, you know, you can kind of have those expectations over there. And, um, and they might, you know, they might kind of realize like, wow, that, you know, maybe I came on too, too strong. Maybe my expectations were, you know, unrealistic or, or whatever there is. But that just, my, my point is just that as, especially as Christians, you know, we've got to with so little, so little charity in the world these days. And it is, and I hate to be, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but it is, there really is. If you just pay attention, just go to the grocery store, just drive down the street or, you know, you can just see how, how people don't really think about the other person these days and it, and it's it's tough so we've got we really have to stand up as those, as those lights and it's difficult but we will be rewarded um and that reward i think is is bettering the world around us um for sure yeah it's it's certainly an interesting uh discussion today because there are so many great things happening too and we could we get the opportunity to look at you know focus on the bad things and the division and the problems at the same time there's incredible charity and incredible things going on in the world as it yeah. relates to believers and non-believers. I saw, a, a, I heard a, a mother Teresa quote recently where she was talking to her sisters um, when she was alive. These are full fledged nuns that sacrificed their life um, in service of others and of Christ. And she had, she had an, an update when she was talking to them and she said, my biggest concern is that some of you don't really know Christ. Now just, just think about that for a second. Yeah. Her biggest concern for nuns who had in theory given up everything, their family, their money, their, where they live, what they sacrifice. Her biggest concern was that, some of them didn't know Christ. And you start to think about it in that scope, in that arena of what's happening in the world. You have a lot of people doing good things that might not know Christ. And there's a big difference in kind of doing good things in the world and knowing that we're doing it for the man for God that became man that died on the cross for our sins. And there's a big difference. There is a big difference. Agreed. Uh, I was, <laughs> I'm on this personal development kick, Jason, like I am. I mean, I'm always trying to grow and get better. And I, I picked up a book recently called nonviolent communication. And it's, uh, yeah. it's an interesting book. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of it, No, um, I haven't. but it, it's related to, um, what we're just talking about here with expectations and and he, he the whole idea behind this book is that um, whether it's spouses or people with differences of opinions or whatever it may be, the root of almost all violent communication or in this case, um, core disagreements is people's needs not being met. Yeah. And, and, he, and he wrote something in the book that oh, was so inter interesting. He says, J Jason, he said, needs are life in motion. Needs are life in motion. And that we must connect to needs and meet them in others. And I, I found it really interesting as a, as a husband, as someone that's been married 10 years, you 16 years, um, how critical it is to meet the needs of, of your spouse and of your children uh, and how meeting their needs can ultimately meet their expectations and, and how that can improve the relationship and someone's flourishing really in life. How often have you thought about the five love languages or meeting the needs of your wife if they're different than yours and or your children? Yeah, I was getting ready to bring up love languages. You know, I think that's a, a great point because um, we all, you know, we all sort of speak a different love language in a way. There's, there's, you know, five different love languages, I guess, according to that, that theory. But, um, but in a sense, you know, it, it is, it is important to to understand those, especially, especially everything, you know, starting with our family. You know, that's that's where, that's where we can change things. That's where we can really engage and and live the Christian life. Um, 
but really understanding that, you know, each one of our kids are so different. Uh, and I know yours are as well. And knowing that, you know, some, you know, just maybe need a little encouragement. Some are more affectionate. Some, you know, like to be complimented or, or whatever it may be. And, and our wives, same thing, you know, and, and we, you know, you and I, um, there are things that, you know, where we're going to, you know, need to be lifted up and and um, and made more secure and, and, you know, maybe have our you know, our expectations not, you know, met, you know, in a sense, but um but or the, the needs met. Yeah. I mean, if you think about the five love languages, if you if anyone listening is unfamiliar, um, the five love languages are from Dr. Chapman, words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service and receiving gifts. And we probably could do a whole show about the five love languages yeah. and meeting the needs of our spouse. But it is amazing how often spouses and or parents and children their love languages are different, but our actions tend to speak in the languages of our own love languages. So if, if as an example, my love language is, is um, physical touch, I need a hug or a high five or a pat on the back or some type of physical a- attraction, then and my wife's love languages are quality time, there's a good chance she's going to express her love to me in quality time. And I'm probably going to express my love with her with giving her a hug. And she doesn't really care about the hug. And I don't really care about the quality time. (laughs) Or it's certainly not that we don't care, but it's not how we speak love. And so it's an interesting thing to think about in terms of expectations and meeting the needs of our spouse or our children. Yeah, it's very important, and and I can see, and I and I've I've worked on that. I can't say that I've worked on it through the science of the five love languages, but I think in theory, I you know knowing enough about them and just knowing that you know we we each need those things, it's just it makes a world of difference. Especially you know I can some of the kids especially, and it's of course my wife. You know when 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 we're connecting there, it obviously is is good for both of us and good for our kids and a healthy marriage and healthy home. Um, very important things. And, uh, you know, even more so, right. Just, you know, understanding the love language, you know, of our Lord. Um, mm-hmm. and I think there may be a book out there about that as well, uh, or something along those lines, you know, and, and understanding those things and, and being in tune with, you know, what we need from our Lord and, and not that he needs anything from us, but what he desires from us. And it's a relationship, right. It, it all, you know, whether it's our spouse or our kids or, or our faith and relationship with our Lord, it, it comes down to just relationship. Mm. So very important to work on. Love it. Well, why don't you wrap us up in prayer here? In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, our God, thank you for this day, for our lives, for our family. Uh, please continue to watch over and guide us, protect us. You are our expectation. Help us to work towards you, for you, and by you. So that we may bring this light and this love to the world that is in so much need of you. We ask these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hey guys, Jason Murphy again. The men of the Charlotte Diocese are uniting to spread the truth of Jesus Christ and our Catholic faith through the local radio airwaves. This month, we are kicking off a pledge drive to get our local Carolina Catholic radio station, AM 1270, back on the air. In these extraordinary times, we believe it is more important now than ever to evangelize on the public airwaves to the tens of thousands of souls who travel daily on the highways around Metropolitan, Charlotte, and beyond. This goal is split into three different phases. Phase 1, 30 days. If a thousand men come forward and donate one dollar a day for one month, we can put Carolina Catholic Radio back on the air. Phase 2, 90 days. If a thousand men make twenty dollar a month donations from October to December, it will pay off all debts by the end of the year. In Phase 3, if a thousand men can commit on an ongoing basis of ten dollars a month in 2022, it will allow us to meet projected monthly expenses throughout the year. Can we count on you to be part of this comeback? Please be sure to download the Carolina Catholic smartphone app from the Apple Store or Google Play to experience all the great local content available through Carolina Catholic Media. For more information, please contact us at feedback at carolinacatholicradio.org. God bless and Esto Vere.